after more than 15 years of field research, the Explain group decided to step up into the alien phenomenon. Since INX 3 level classification of close encounters, the extent of the incidents and case studies grew to a degree of complexity which called for a new perspective in the interaction between humans and the visitors, shifting the prime focus of the investigation from the flying craft to the extraterrestrial or interterrestrial biological entities, EBE, IBE. Close Encounters X or CEX is the TXP's five-level classification of alien interference. CEX-1 or sighting of flying objects at great distance. CEX-2 or sighting of flying objects at medium or close range which results in the modification of the environment. CEX-3 or sighting of EBE IBE on the ground, with or without a craft. CEX4, or human EBE IBE interaction at all levels, from abductions to conflicts to cooperation. CEX5, or human EBE IBE product from hybrids to clones to engineered living creatures, ELC. Hello everybody, uh, Diego Antolini from the Explain Group here with Leah Capitelli from Australia. Hi Leah. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Okay. I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing? Not bad. Given the circumstances, we're hanging in there, and uh, you see, even uh, in a, some uh, strains that we are living through right now, we still manage to record our Starseed episodes, which makes me very happy. So we give continuity yes. to our yes. to our plan. Okay, yes. and I I trust that you're also doing well in Melbourne, Australia. I am, I am. It's um, yeah. Things are, things are, things are right in this, in this, in this little corner. I think in in my house, we're 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 managing quite well. Um, I I think with a, with a fortunate few. I think uh, for a lot of people in this in this time. So, but uh, yeah, we're cool. we're doing well. I'm doing well. I mean, I'm I've started a new book. So. Oh, okay, okay. No, hold on there. It's not these episodes. We're going to talk about something else. But yes, I absolutely will ask you that later because I want to know. Okay. Actually, we all want to know. Uh, we have we will have an anticipation about what we're doing, what you're doing next. But okay. uh, tonight here, tonight here from Italy, um, it's episode seven, and episode seven of the Starseed uh, series. Uh, we are getting to a crucial moment in uh, Leah's life because now she is starting to talk with her mom and she's trying to tell her what's going on between her and her space brothers, space star people and uh, she's trying to understand her nature and to communicate that with the person she loves most, her mom so the, re the reaction of uh, Leah's mother it's a, a scientist by the way she's a, a scientist and uh, her reaction is a surprise and at a certain point uh, that Leah would tell us later she decided to take action to make a phone call and uh, Leah tell us what happens at that point uh, who uh, your mom called and what happened next so um, she started re re mother. My mother started researching about um, other people um, like myself um, on the internet. She she was talking about it. Uh, she was looking up encounters or contactees, ETs. You know, talking to humans, etc., etc., etc. Didn't take long for her to find um, there are many people all over the world who who have these experiences from all backgrounds, all walks of life, all ages, etc. And uh, she came across this uh, researcher, Mary Rodwell, uh, who was fortunately from Australia, uh, Australian-based, and um, she was uh, investigating and researching uh, 
young young people, children, teenagers, um, particularly. I mean, she would talk to all all, all ages, but uh, particularly the young, uh, the youths of um, who, who were having these uh, contact experiences with um, ETs, EDs, etc. And um, yeah, so it was um, my mother was very very happy with this. She was very encouraged by this. So. Um, she eventually uh, emailed her and um, they were talking for a little while and then I started talking to Mary Rodwell after, after uh, not too long. So um, she and I spoke a few times here and there. I gave her my complete story. Um, it was a very long email. So, you know, it was a couple of emails, I think, if you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, even for 17 at the time, uh, I was like, you know, pages. But anyway, um, so eventually we did meet up. We, um, I think I was about 19 at the time when we finally met. And uh, we had a, she, she interviewed me. It was like a, like a meeting, like a meet and greet slash um, interview because she wanted to, because uh, she had already referenced me in some of her other works and other conferences and presentations. So um, as one of her case studies, because um, she was quite familiar with my case at that point. And um, I think, you know, she said, hey, do you want to do an interview? And I said, yeah, sure. That was, you know, so that was my very first interview uh, about this, um, about this uh, area, <laughs> really. <laughs> um, so yeah, and that was that was an awesome time. It was an awesome awesome experience, and uh, very nervous as you can imagine. But uh, Mary seemed very uh, like it. Nothing surprised her. That was a thing. Like nothing actually shocked her or anything I said. Um, um, but the thing is, I didn't I didn't feel um, like I was telling something. You know, was telling a stranger. Um, about my experiences, fearing that they would judge me, if because like she she had this sort of air about her, um, even even when we were digitally talking, um, that it was yeah she's like yeah I know I understand, and so I didn't feel I didn't feel awkward I didn't feel uncomfortable, um, it didn't feel um, it felt like two people having exchanging experiences you know so it was it was very normal me um in those days do you remember a couple of questions that she asked you in the beginning like before you sort of you know broke the ice with her what were the first questions mm -hmm. that you remember she asked you questions um anything that stands out in particular um not that i can remember it um it was it was nearly ten years ago. So she it. so she basically let you talk. Let's say that she more than ask you yeah. questions, she let you talk. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. She gave me a platform, and I just went. So yeah. And did you feel probably it's because of that that you felt like a kind of a stream of consciousness that you pour out and you didn't have any restraints and any any blocks and that maybe sometimes. Uh, you may feel, you know, inquired too much, but in this type of situation, Mary was sensitive enough to just l let you the freedom to communicate. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, what was your impression about her? Like when you first met her, and obviously, you know, it was a stranger for you. Uh, although, mm -hmm. as you say, you she referred you in her cases and studies and everything. But what were your feelings? You, you've been always a very sensitive child and, and teenager. So at that point, do you remember the feelings that you had when you were with her? Um, I, it was very, um, I was very at ease. Um, I was excited for sure. I was excited um, and nervous at the same time because I wanted to talk to her about everything. It was, it was like a moment where I could just like talk and I didn't have to over explain or, you know, try to um, you know, explain every because the thing is, my my mom was already extremely used to this by this point. Like, I'm I'm explaining all the stuff to her, and she's like, I don't get it though, but I don't get it. Whereas with Mary, it was just like, oh yeah, telepathy, and she's like, yep, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'm like, sweet. So I didn't have to explain anything. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was weird because um yeah, the feeling I got was yeah, just very very calm, but extremely like I was 
yeah, I was calm and relaxed with her, but I was excited because it was a, it was an opportunity to actually talk to someone who got it. So yeah. Did she also give you other examples from different cases, or basically just she just said yes, I know, yes, I know, but she didn't give you any reference, or she told you stories about cases that she had investigated before? She has um, uh, mentioned one other particular well-known contactee. Um, I think in my, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but um, and I'm not sure about privacy reasons, so mm -hmm. I don't, don't I, say the name. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, yeah, she was uh, she was a a person who seemed to have uh, a lot of experiences that were like similar to mine very very similar because she because uh, she was also an artist she also drew them but she drew things um she drew more um kind of like geometric col super colorful shapes whereas i tended to go for the more realistic-esque dare i say um sort of the uh, profiles landscapes architecture ships technology so um where she did the more energetic uh stuff i did the more you know Physical, quote unquote. Right. Uh, but yeah, anyway, she had very similar experiences to mine and had uh, physical contact, um, actually more so than me. So I was very jealous. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she, she had mentioned a, a fair few. And um, there was a young boy, I believe. Um, I think he was about um, at that point. Yeah, he was probably uh, seven or eight or something like that. And he was talking about, um, yeah like uh, psy um, psychic abilities, um, like like I was as well. So it was just, so there's this huge age of ranges um, where uh, you have these people who are having these experiences who have this knowledge, particularly this knowledge and information that is um, both um, mentally transferred through, um, uh, through telepathic communication, but also just intrinsic. It's just something that we got this sort of natural um, knowledge we just have, have, somehow have this ac acquire it you know and yeah mary mary helped um, with me helped helped me to understand it a bit better uh, for others anyway just to add something more to leah's uh, story we can confirm to have uh, interviewed mary when we first started to talk with leah back in 2016 2017 mm -hmm. Then uh, at some point we contacted with Mary and we asked Mary her opinion about Leah and she actually told us that all from all over 3,000 cases that she had been studies in her career, most of them children with psychic abilities or children who claim to be starseed uh, and children who has, have uh, regular contacts with ETs from uh, light beings uh, to mantas, uh, like insect-like uh, uh, beings uh, and so forth. She mm -hmm. said, Leah is one of the most authentic and remarkable of all cases that have been investigated in all my uh, years of, of study. So I still remember when I spoke with Mary, I think it was winter of 2016, uh, that I was impressed by her comment because she just came out of the blue in a very calm and soothing voice. She said, oh yeah, Leah is is the real deal. I mean, she even told me, but I'm not sure if you remember, she told me that once uh, you spoke in a, like foreign tongues or you were mm -hmm. able to, to, to speak in a, in a different language. But I don't remember. I, I don't think she ever put you under hypnosis. And that's also yeah. another thing that adds up to, to your, you know, your your story because no, she didn't, she never did, she doesn't in general, she doesn't perform mm -hmm. hypnosis. So anything that she is able to pull out of uh, uh, children or or adults, uh, for that matter, it's absolutely natural. It's not induced. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the mm -hmm. point. So. Well, yeah, uh, this episode was basically to introduce uh, your encounter with Mary. We're going to keep it quite short, but I just want your uh, last comment on uh, Mary. Do you honestly think uh, that your encounter with Mary changed the way you proceeded towards your path of uh, dissemination and coming forward to to share your story with others, or you believe that even without Mary, you'd have still walked down that road? 
Absolutely. I, I, it, 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 um, that was the, that was the turning point. Um, because, um, I was always, as you are uh, well aware now, I was a bit of a recluse, um, about my experiences. I didn't like, I was uncomfortable sharing it. Um, but when I started talking to Mary and she started bringing me out in, in the open, um, starting with the interview, um, that, that gave me the, the courage to to go from there and um yeah i i i i owe her everything i owe i owe everything that i have that i have now um so yeah and if you mar- if uh, mary you're listening thank you <laughs> <laughs> wait if she doesn't listen she will she will watch the video once it's uploaded actually we'll make sure that she mm-hmm. watches this episode absolutely yes. absolutely yes yes Okay, then uh, I think that's it for today. And Leah, we'll see each other again for episode eight because it's going to be a very interesting episode where she will continue to talk to us about her past life in Atlantis. And uh, we will know more about the, her book that it's uh, out right now. It's published and uh, for sale. You can find it on Amazon. But yeah, next episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Okay, Leah? All right. Thank you. You take care. Okay. Bye-bye.